Welcome to the Big Money Stylist Podcast. For those of you who don't know, I am Sarah Stevenson. I've still not changed my last name from getting married, but that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> um, I actually basically live here in my free time. I am like their every other weekend child, I swear. They have custody of me every other weekend. <laughs> I am here all the time, and this is my second home. <laughs> it's so fun. But... We just got done with a phase three intensive class, and today's actually, like, I feel like it's such a fun, like, full circle day because, like, of my guest that I have here, who I will let introduce herself in just one second, but it's like, we met in this education program, we, like, became friends, and now, like, we're on this crazy adventure together that we're kind of going to talk to you about today, but... My special guest today is... Hi, I'm Brett Cody. (laughs) We're going to like dive into like lots of different things today, but I want to kind of talk about like, talk to me about your like journey through like NBR to then like we met and then you're graduated and now you're back into a phase three intensive even though you're licensed already. So, like, kind of walk us through all of that and, like, why you decided to come again, even though you're already done. Um, I feel like along the way through going through NBR, there's so much that you learn, and in each phase of each process that you go to, you take in so much information. And I think when you make it along the way, you hit a point where you think you know stuff, and then you come back for another training, and then... It kind of opens your mind up and you're kind of like mind blown of the things you learned that you must have missed before. So along the way, you just take in more and more information, like the tiny details. Mm -hmm. So just because I'm licensed doesn't mean that I'm the best, that I'm perfect to everything. And so always continuing to um, educate myself so that I can be the best. I've, I went through training. I joined NBR back in 2019. Um, I was like the creepy stalker that was like, hey, oh my gosh, hey, Sarah, <laughs> who, who's this girl over here in Delta? I, I love everything you do. I stalked her. I just love the work that she did. And so then I just kind of was like inserted myself into her life. And I was like, I love what you do. And I just kind of like stuck with her. And then you didn't insert yourself. I did. I feel like you put yourself out there when, like, so I mean, like, different choice of words, but True. I do feel like, like, you thought you had a thought, you acted on that thought, and you put yourself out there, even though you're like, I'm gonna seem like a crazy person. Right. But it's and not. I just, I have always been a person who I look up to people who I think are amazing, and so along my way, I just kept. Like putting myself more and more out there and kind of getting out of that scared zone that I was always in and being comfortable doing what I've done for so long that I just needed something more. We live in a small town and so breaking out of that mold of you can only go so far. Yeah. And so then once I made it through NBR, um, through the training, they opened up Mastermind and it I'm, I call myself a forever student because I love I love learning. I think same. I think it's the best thing ever, and it just it it's so rewarding when you can give somebody this beautiful makeover, and you're like, holy shit, I did that. Where before I was like, I don't even know how to curl hair. <laughs> you're like, you <laughs> we made great. it a really yeah. really long ways in this. Yes, that is so fun. I feel like that too because I feel like I'm such a perfectionist, and truthfully, like. Nothing I ever do feels good enough. And I'm like, no, I need to do better. No, I need to do better. Like, what can I do to do this? So I feel like that is where this company for me is so great because, and like, not the, I mean, yes, the company, but the education program in and of itself. So it's like, I get the company side because I work here, but it's like also the education side because I got so much out of it. And Something that is so funny, which is why today is like such a crazy full circle, is because a couple weeks ago, I actually, okay, let's rewind a little bit. So, me and Brett are, it's funny how Brett and I, what, what's, what's the English version, Brett? Brett and I. Brett and I. Um, we have talked about opening a salon for what, like 
Two years. Two years. Two years. And I kind of wanted to, like, bring this up on here because to kind of give people, I don't know, permission, hope, ideas, just, like, anything because... I mean, five years ago, if you would have told me I'd open a salon, I would have said that you were on crack. Absolutely well, And the fact that we're opening a salon together when I was like, I'm the crazy girl. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Now I'm like, Sarah, if it wasn't for me coming and being like, hey, hi, want to be friends? Hi, me. You're doing this NVR thing. We wouldn't be in this position yeah. right now at all. Yeah. So we're opening a salon together. It's definitely been... A process and a couple weeks ago I like I swear to you it was the middle of the night and I messaged you and I was like oh my gosh I have an idea I'm like we should do a podcast together and not necessarily because I think a lot of stylists that already have established places they do like things and they share their journey or not even their journey it's just like this is what we're doing now and I was like we need to do a podcast something together about the process of opening a salon because I think that's a process that not a lot of people talk about and let me just tell you like I don't even have any words Sarah's new to this so (laughs) I opened a salon um, it's been two years now. Well, I didn't open it. I took over a salon, and mm-hmm. then I went and, and redid the whole salon inside. In the moment, I thought it was going to be amazing, and I had all these ideas. And <coughs> shortly after, it, was, it like blew up in my face, not how I wanted it to go. And so I think it's because it was somebody else's salon yeah. before me, and sense. it was not mine. So... Mm-hmm. It opened my eyes. So then when me and Sarah decided to open a salon together, it was like Sarah's Sarah's over here going, well, let's do this. And I was like, girl, that's going to be a lot of money. (laughs) There's a lot of money that goes into this. like, settle right down. And a lot of thought. And and it's crazy because I feel so lucky, to be honest with you, to be a part of the program we're in because we have so many people – that have gone through this already that we can talk to, that we can ask advice from, that we know what not to do. And it's just been so interesting. So I'm actually kind of excited. So it's like our semi-first podcast together is on the Big Money Stylist podcast, which is insane. Did you ever think that you would be on the Big Money the Stylist podcast? that I podcast? ever <laughs> thought I would be on here. No, not in my no. wildest dreams. <laughs> not at right. all. And... So I wanted to do one, so like in the middle of the night, as I'm messaging her, I'm saying like, oh my gosh, like we need to talk about like how we're making the decisions we're making and the process that we're doing and the decisions we make and why we make them. And granted, like our salon's not open yet, hopefully soon. (laughs) Fingers crossed. October 1st, we're going for that. We're putting it out (laughs) there. Um, And just like our goals inside of like, what we want our financial goals to be in the first year, like how we're going about the hiring process, because I feel like the things that we're doing are very Mm non-traditional. Yes. And like, it's wild because I don't know. I mean, like five years ago, again, I would have been like, no, no, I don't think so. That's okay. Well, I think um, being in this program, it just opens your eyes up to these women who've already created these massive salons and not even massive like small salons even that are just the experience is such a higher quality and Mm -hmm. that's honestly what we're going for it's not I do amazing hair it's I want to provide this experience yeah because that I mean you're spending hours with your your client they're literally like pouring their hearts into you and so I don't know it just having that whole environment a very positive environment beautiful environment that Mm -hmm. you can yeah Yeah. I love, I was just saying yesterday that, um, because we were in class, and I I got real fired up about it because I do every single time, but it's like, it is not just about hair for me. Like, I feel like anybody, like, a stylist, like, a block away could be just as good at hair coloring as I am, but, like, for me, it's seeing the transformation of, like, someone's, like, soul that they just... All of a sudden, they wake up and they realize, like, oh, my gosh, I'm important and I'm pretty and I have confidence and I can conquer the world. And, like, and then they start realizing they have goals and they're, like, oh, my gosh, I'm more than just a mom and I'm more than just, like, the person that I've allowed myself, like, the shell of a person I've allowed myself to be. And 
I just think that's something not a lot of like stylists realize because they're like, oh, I'm doing hair. I make money. Like life is great. And I'm like, no, no. Right. Like, it is about like transforming someone's whole entire life. Well, I, when I found NBR, I was a person who I've always had short hair. I've always tried to be like spunky and like to express myself through my crazy hair colors and yeah. things like that. And but I never fully felt beautiful. Like, growing up, I was always so insecure of myself. I was always like, I'm Same. not. My hair was like a blanket. Yeah. I would, like, hide behind it. See, and yeah. I wish, sometimes I wish I had that. But the second I got my first I mean, set, no, my like, hair was never long. But oh, yeah. I was like, was it long? No, it wasn't long. It was just, like, for me, it was just hair. Like, if I, like, same, I would, I had purple hair. I had short hair. Or I'd try to get any method of extensions I could because I was like, oh, long hair is just. I mean, so, yes, I technically kind of had long hair because it was. Extensions. Okay. But it was like, I I don't know. It, and I'm sure like other people have been this way too, where it's like you hide behind your hair feeling like, oh, I feel pretty depending on how my hair looks. Yeah. If uh, I think mine was, well, maybe if I don't feel pretty, I can be like the cool girl. Like I'm yeah. cool with the cool hair. With the wild hair. But then that first set of extensions, I left and I have never walked out feeling so confident with this long hair. I went to the mall that day. I, Some shopping? And I was just like, damn, check this out. Bre looks amazing. And I've never gone back. Like, it's, yeah. I've been wearing these extensions for four years. Yeah. And same. It makes me feel good. I don't get it, but hair just changes your life. Yeah. It does. When you had ignored me for a month and didn't put my hair back in... <laughs> I <laughs> I had to walk around with no hair on. And I mean, like, I don't have terrible hair by any means, but it's not like how I feel. Like, I don't even know the right, like, confident with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it's long or full, even. And full. So, like, again, like, my hair is not the worst. It's not like super, super thick. It looks thick because it's so curly and fluffy, but like, mm -hmm. The month I had to go without extensions because our schedules just didn't line up, I was just, like, I kind of tried to, like, avoid my stories, and I would, like, avoid social media, and, like, my hair was up a lot okay. because I'm just, like, no, I don't have my long hair. And then as soon as, like, you did it, I was, like, okay. Oh, new bitch remodel. <laughs> what, we going out tonight? Yeah. Going to the club. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Delta doesn't have one of those. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to make one. <laughs> Can we go. make the back room in our salon like a little club? There we go. I like that idea. Yeah. I'll be dropping it. So that'd be great. Drop it like it's hot. Everybody with new extensions. So I don't know. It's just crazy to me because if I were to look back and like look forward, my life now, I never would have like, I'm just like, oh, like. My goal was to, like, graduate and be happy and be, like, a better person and a better mom for my kids. And, like, yeah, when we had our very, very first class, I was like, oh, yeah, being a trainer was so fun. Mm -hmm. Or being graduated and having a successful salon would be so fun. And I'm like, but, I mean, who knows? Right. Like, in my teeny little voice. When I think in the moment you were one of those where you're like, like we all do. We walk in, we're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I want to be a trainer. But then... You, you have to want it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. You have to want it because you are ready to impact people's lives yeah. and bring them up with you. Yeah. Not just like, look at me. I'm yeah. a trainer. I am so cool. <laughs> no, I'm the opposite of that. I You're stress like, out every time. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what if what if I don't do it right? Or what if, yeah, it's, right. it's stressful. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Opening a salon is crazy. And we actually just had interviews, what? Was that two weeks ago? Yeah. We had interviews two weeks ago. And I'll tell you what, I, again, before would have been super nervous. Like, I feel like we both showed up, like, during the interviews. And I was like, nope, this is what we want. This is what we expect. This is where, the like, the direction we're headed. If you don't like that, don't come. We don't need you. Right. And I feel like every single one of them, when I said that to them, I was like, here's the thing. Like, we don't need you here. We want you to be here. And we want you here to want to be here. Did that make sense? That was too many wants. But um, but it's kind of like when they join the academy. Yeah. I, I have so many girls. You can't want it for them. Yeah. I'm like, just just join. You'll you'll love it. Like, I, I can't explain it. I said, you just have to join and then yeah. you'll, you'll get it. But I feel like I want it more. 
Yes. Because I know what it's Oh, I want it for everyone because I always say to people, I joke about it because they'll ask me like, oh, should I join or what should I do or da-da-da-da. And I'm just like, NBR is a lifestyle change. It's like extensions, yes, but it's like it teaches you so much more than that. It's inside of your life and your relationships and how you take care of your body. Like how how's your life different like outside of just work? I have more time. I can travel if I'd like to. Um, I actually have routines in, in place. Like they're not huge things, but they're just little things that I've implemented over the years. Mm-hmm. I've just made it. How's your morning routine? It's actually pretty good. I was a person who I would literally roll out of bed at like 8 o'clock and I had to be to work at 9 and I was just like, oh, hurry and get ready, whatever. Yeah. Now it's like 4. Mm-hmm. There are some days it's like 3. I, won't, I, won't I went to, to that, but yes. I was never a person who could do that, but like to yeah. get up and go to the gym at that time has yeah. been the only time I can get to the gym if I'm going to go, so... I will say my pre, I guess, NBR life routine is I would lay in bed. So I'd stay up really late either reading or, like, watching Netflix or just, like, you know, um, sedating life because I'm like, oh, I needed to, like, decompress from life. So I would wake up in the morning to my kids waking me up saying, like, Mom, we're going to be late for school. You need to, like, get out of bed, and which is, like, fine because – I never, like, got ready earlier in the morning. I would take them to school, come home, and get ready, like, in 15 minutes and then go to work. So, because they go to school at 8, I work at 9. And so, literally, they would wake me up at 7.45 and be like, Mom, it's time to go. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming. And now I do. I get up, like, 5.45, 6 o'clock, and I do my whole morning routine. I make breakfast, and they usually don't want me at this point because I was like, oh, do you guys want breakfast? And they're like, no, we eat at school because apparently it's more exciting. I don't know. But, yes. like, so I, again, like, same, I don't wake up at 4 a.m. by any means, but just having that morning routine and being up, and I get to actually wake them up, and I'm like, oh, it's Jax, like, time to get out of bed. And I think you're happier yeah. Too, if you can have some time to yourself. Oh, yeah. Even yes. if it's if I just can go sit and have coffee or whatever it is, mm-hmm. I just I actually am awake. Instead of I remember um the girl who owned the salon before me, I would roll into work and I'd just be like, I'd have this pissed off look on my face. And like, why am like, I God Brett, I didn't know if you hated me, if I pissed you off, and I was like, Nope, I'm just I'm not awake. I'm just tired. I literally just rolled out of bed. But I think yeah. you're so burnt out doing hair all the time, mm-hmm. working the hours that you do, that now I show up and I'm like, oh, I got two clients today. Dude, it's the best, yeah. best feeling ever. Yeah. So Well, and it's like, <clears throat> for me, my morning routine, because I feel like my brain is like, go, 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 go all the time. And it actually, because I wake up early, I... It's almost like during my stacking, I have like a brain dump. So it's like I have to get myself out of my own way before I pour into other people. Right. And it's like I could not. I mean, yeah, I feel like I was like good at my job because I would still pour into everyone. But when I got home, I was like a raging bitch Mm -hmm. because I was like, I have nothing left. Or you sit, like my husband, I'll go in sometimes. If it's been a a long day, like a a really hard install, I'll go home and I'll just sit there or if my clients have. Like dumped like, I on just me. Need a minute. And my husband, he's so talkative, and I'm just like, I have nothing to say. I will just sit in silence. And... You're like I need twenty Fine, minutes, but please, I have nothing. Twenty left. minutes. I've solved all the world problems today, all of them. Well, I solved world peace, and I need a Everything. minute. Everything. <laughs> yes. So, okay, how has your like marriage been affected? Because I know for me, like, I mean, again, I was married at the time, then I got divorced. On my life, just like came to like a screeching halt and I basically had to like redo my whole life essentially because I was doing so much shit like wrong right. not wrong but it's just like it just so much of it wasn't working for me because I was living for everyone but me when I think you you were growing together yeah yeah we weren't Almost. we were not and so then like fast forward like now I'm in like the best relationship ever. Like honestly, I do. I feel, I'm like Trevor. Where did you? I come love from? you and Trevor together. Like where did he come from? I still remember when him and his little buddies were sitting in your salon, and they were talking about like 
how you do extensions and they're like, that's crazy. People are crazy if they yeah. come to you. Yep. And I'm like, Trevor, now you're living the life, man. Trevor's the salon manager. Like, I actually told him, I said, if you want to be, like, if you want to work as the salon manager, we'll hire you and I'll I'll pay you in other favors. And he's <laughs> like, wait, I don't get real money? <laughs> he wants the money, man. He does. He wants the money. Um, he wants the other stuff too, probably, you know, but... <laughs> He's like, I want my cake and eat it too. So, but it's crazy because like we have date nights. We set aside time for each other. Like we actually have our own podcast. And I mean, it's just a shit show of a podcast because we're just like talking and bullshitting and like. But it's the real you. That's yeah. The thing is I think you have to show up as the real yeah. you. Yeah. Because people all over Delta yeah. are like, who the hell are these guys? Who are these freaks? And yeah. they probably enjoy it. So They do. Small time. They do. So, I wish we had, me and my husband had more time together. Um, I have, well, I have more time, but my husband doesn't. So his yeah. job doesn't allow it. A lot. He should be the salon manager. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> He'd be like waving at everybody. Hey. He's like, hi guys, welcome. <laughs> welcome, ladies. <laughs> yes. That'd be so funny. Um, yeah, so it's like. Do you ever just look at your life and you're like, how is this my life? And how did this happen because of freaking extensions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I live comfortably now. I had, like, we almost lost our house. Mm -hmm. Um, My car was repossessed from the one I worked at. Like, we were in a very hard place, but we were working so hard to get Nothing. We had nothing else. Well, and you're just like, I don't understand how I'm working so hard and I'm always behind. Uh-huh. Always. Yeah. Always. And all, you're always trying to, like, play catch up. And that's where the burnout comes from because you're like, I am dead. I don't know what else to do. I'm doing everything right. I possibly can. And I feel like that's when people's, like, relationships fall apart is because mm-hmm. they're like, I don't have anything left to give you. And, like, we can't make this work. I feel like um, because we, when I met my husband, we both came from a really crappy point in life. So he got divorced. Um, his his everything he had. So he was living out of a trailer at his mom's house, like a fifth grade. Oh, and I had gotten well. I'd been out of a marriage for a really long time, but I just I was in a really bad place myself. Yeah, and so we came together, and. We had nothing, and so we've built up this life together. Where I've never had somebody support me, yeah, the way he has. Never told me no. Um, sometimes I'm like, uh, so I spent five thousand dollars so to go learn extensions. I know yeah. I didn't have any money for it, but and he's just like, okay, and I'm like, yeah. but I think it, he knows how hard I work to want this, and I know he works so hard. To be- yeah. I mean, my situation was sort of similar. So when I actually signed up for, like, NBR the first time, I had – they did, like, phone interviews, and they called you. Like, you applied. They did phone interviews. And I remember being on the phone. I was in my bedroom. I shut the door because I was like, the kids are going to be loud. My husband doesn't know what I'm doing. And they called me, and they, like, walked me through all the things. I asked all the questions. And then they're like, okay, it's going to be $4,000 like you have to pay today to hold your spot. And it's non-refundable. And I was just like, is there any way that I can like pay Monday? Because I was still kind of like, ooh, like yeah. that's a lot. And at the time I had like literally I worked every day, all day because, you know, you're trying to build up a clientele. I moved to this town and I had $2,000 in my bank account. <clears throat> And my husband had just got paid and he had like $2,100, something, literally. I don't even know, barely that. So I was like, okay. And she goes, no, you can't because by the time Monday comes, like all the spots will likely be gone because I have this many calls after you. And it was just for like one, like 25 person class. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I honestly, I could not even tell you my thought process in that moment because I swear to you, like, my body just took over. And it was like, okay, done. Here's our credit card. And I went out and I actually told my ex-husband at the time, I was like, I was like, so I just signed up for this class. And I was like, I spent all of our money. So I was like, we are going to have to live off of this $100 for the next two weeks. 
And he was pissed. Like, he was like, I can't believe you did that. Like, he's like, I mean, are you going to make that back? Like, it was a little bit stressful for a minute. For two weeks, I oh, used sure. every cent we had because sure. I was like, I have to make this work. And then it was like, I mean, crazy from there because now I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Well, I'm a person who's like, well, I know if I go to work, I'm going to make more money. Like, Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I've always had that mindset because yeah. – I would I'll figure stress it out. out so much about yeah. money being a single mom. I was, like, I was gonna say, I think you're, well, when you're a single mom, you just you're like, I have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I don't have another option. Yeah, and then you learn one day that money is actually not all you need. It's, yeah, I I would rather be like poor and happy than like, do you know what I mean? Than yeah. stress out about money, money, and how mm -hmm. how to make it. And I don't know. Yeah, like it's a weird concept, but I I would rather be with the people I love and. Like my family, my friends, going yeah. places. I maybe it's because I've hit that age in life where I'm like, I don't, I don't necessarily want things. I want time. Yeah, want to go places. Want to do things and mm -hmm. see people and experience things. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and yes, money plays into that factor. But like I said, if I go to work, I'm gonna make some more money. And I'm, yeah. I'm like a crazy hoarder with money. I'm just like, <laughs> I shove it all away. I'm like, don't spend that. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, I need all. But of I it. think it yeah. comes from a place of scarcity too, where I'm yeah. like, God, I, I didn't know where my money was coming from. Yeah. I was hoping I'd make enough to You're like, pay the bills. Hopefully, I don't need a feet finder. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. Yeah, I don't know. I. I will say, like, to add to that, like, even, like, rewind a couple weeks even when I went to Taylor Swift, like, I had kind of a moment where I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't spend this money. I can't afford this. And then I'm like, no, that is not our mindset. Like, we are not living in that mindset anymore, like, me and myself having this conversation. And I had that same thought. I was like, I can always make more money. It's the experiences that I wanted this life for. So as a money hoarder, <laughs> I'm just like... No, I'm going to spend this money and I'm going to enjoy this experience with my daughter. But like, if your daughter will never forget it. No. Ever. And I, like, I feel like I will never forget that. It was like a life lesson to me because it's like, it's just money. But I would have never, like, I mean, I had that mindset a little bit before, but it was like, I just had less money to work with. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, no, I've created this life and this space and this abundance for myself and I've worked really hard to get there that like no like we deserve to go make mem memories together because it's like I didn't work this hard and make this money to just for nothing right and so it's like no I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna just go for it and I'll tell you what I don't regret it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I was like no we'll do it and it was a memory and Bella loved it and we took I want to say, like, our stepdaughter, but it was, like, my ex's daughter. Anyways, it was a whole was a family ordeal. Anyways, so we went, and it was so much fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that kind of goes into, um, like, us growing our business and Gary to open this on it. Yeah. I've, I've been saving for, like, two years yeah. to make sure that I can do this because I don't want to take out any loans. I, I never in my wildest dreams that I would, like, purchase a building and, like, dump money into it. Yeah. Just with money with cash that I saved. Yeah. And it blows plus it doesn't affect my normal everyday life. Yeah. Like that that's crazy. And so I'm I'm ready to dump money into um, this beautiful salon. Like so our that, future. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I look at this as this will one day be my my way of income, maybe mm -hmm. without having to work behind the chair. Right? Because nobody wants to do hair for the rest of their life. No. As fun as it is, like I don't know, it's it's a lot. <laughs> I, your body gets burnt out. Yeah. And I, I hope that we're able to uh, bring in girls just like us who are just mm -hmm. as driven and want more for their families and want to grow and that we can bring into this building. Yeah. You know, that we can grow teams with. Yeah. So. And I will say, like, to kind of bring all of that back around, it's like none of this would have been possible, honestly, for either of us. Like, maybe, like, we could have figured it out. Maybe we could have struggled. Maybe, like, we probably would have done it separately because I don't know that we would have met. But it's, like, without this, like, first of all, I will say, like, there's two parts to this. Like, one, without us getting to a point where we believe in ourselves enough to take the leap of faith, like, I'm going to pour money into this education program because I feel like this is where I need to be. And then, two, like, pouring everything because I'm, like, an all-or-nothing kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like 
pouring my heart and soul into this education and making sure like I'm going to be my very best at this because I spent this money on this. It's like without the education that I have received and the things that I have learned from this company, like I never, never, never would be in a place where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in a podcast studio at a tr- as a trainer for Natural Beaded Rose opening a salon with like my partner that we met at this company mm-hmm. and we're paying cash to open a salon. Yeah. That's like, insane. It just goes to show that the community here is so good that their their education is top notch. I've never been to any education that yeah. as well. It's just like it's always been a two day one and done type thing and I can't imagine learning NBR. In, like, no, that would have I would been quit. a complete Immediately, shit show. No, complete shit show. Like no. the whole first year was a shit show. No. But you have this community that everybody rises together. And well, and if you don't rise, it's like I will say, speaking as a trainer, I'm like, how can I support you? Like, right. I want you to have what I have. Right. I want you to be where I'm at. Even like a brand new baby to like a licensed artist, I'm like how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Like, because I know that you can have this. Well, and the industry is saturated with people who are envious of people who are, they're so jealous because somebody might do hair better than them. And I look at, I have, um, I have a couple girls in my salon that I am just blown away by the, the colors that they do. I'm like, God, you are so good. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm not good. And I'm like, I just literally me. I'm not, I'm I've never been jealous of people. I'm just like, how do I how do I do what you do? Like always inspired. Always. Yeah. So Yeah. Which is funny because I swear you always say that to me and I'm like, no Brett, I'm like, you dumb bitch. I'm like, how can I be like you? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. So but I just feel like inside of our like network and tribe of artists, it's like it's not like that. It's not envy. It's like, oh my gosh, girl, like, tell me what you did. Like, help me. Like, how did you get that color formula? Or like, what What can I do better on my work? Or mm-hmm. like, I have no problems asking people for feedback and being like, no, I'm not above you just because I'm a trainer. Like, I still want to learn. Please, like, give me feedback. Yeah. And that's what I love about the trainers. They're also continuing their education. Mm-hmm. We see them showing up all the time to makes them amazing leaders inside their own salons. And it's all from, I've watched many of the trainers just start from square one. And you're just like, they blossom right in front of you. So this whole, this whole tribe is just, it's been. Yeah. So I feel like, I don't even think we can top it from there. So I will say to wrap things up, like, If you are somebody that is on the fence or you listen to this and you're like, these two are nutso, um, great for you. But if you're like on the fence about joining education or I would highly recommend like do your homework. And although things might seem a little expensive, like on our end, it's like, no, you get what you pay for. I 100% believe that in any sense of any word, like you get what you pay for and I will tell you from my personal experience, like whether I worked here or not, this entire program education alone has changed the way I show up as a human being inside of my salon, inside of my marriage, inside of my like mom life, my friends, everything. So if you're on the fence, get off the fence. (laughs) Make make a decision. Do it scared. I mean, because something I've lived off of the last several months, it's like, Make a decision, and if you don't like it, change it. Mm -hmm. Change your decision. Yep. Yeah. It's allowed. It's allowed. We allow change. (laughs) So any last words Um, that you can offer some advice to a brand new, like, newbie just jumping in? Just be open to grow and don't be closed off. So I love that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys for listening to this crazy, wonderful, fun episode of the big money stylist podcast and hopefully you guys have a great day see you later bye